And action. with the dominoes uh, leads the last table over to this block which then pushes the golf ball down the track. Golf ball hits the block into the basket and the basket is tied to string which pulls down on the light switch. And so here's how it works. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When setting up the blocks for our domino Rube Goldberg device, um, if you put them too far apart they miss each other. If you put them too close together, you run out of blocks before you get to the other side of the table going long ways. So a uh, good trick for this is to use one of the blocks. If you lay it down on its side, it tells you the space that you need between the blocks. When you're making a turn, the corners here uh, are a bit tricky, and so I would put them a little bit closer together in the areas where you have to make a turn, and then back to the spacing in the areas where you're going straight. So remember, around the turns, you want them a little bit closer together. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my favorite part of the year, where we get to use the RGD Rube Goldberg device. Uh, each team's going to get a bucket full of goodies here, and we'll talk a little bit about what you could do with those. By the way, each team gets a bucket like this. I'll have a list in the board of all the materials that are in it. The lost and found bucket is very similar. However, this is not a grab and take what you want. This is, hey, we're missing a track. Oh, there's our track. Let's put it back in our bucket. So this is strictly for if you're missing something, if you have what you need, lost and found stays in the lost and found. Another update with the, um, the bucket of goodies here. We wanna make sure that the Legos are in the Legos cup and the cars in the cars cup. Um, so at the end, when it's time to clean up, we put everything back where it goes. You're of course welcome to take it out and use it during the building time, but when we clean up, Put all the same things back together nice and neat for the next class and hopefully you will find it that way when you start yourself. Also, you may use the blocks if you need them uh, in combination with your goodies bucket here or if you choose not to use the blocks to get in the way, you could just put them under the table um, to give yourself some more space. To start us off, we're going to need one track and two Lego pieces. I find that two by eights work pretty well. Uh, two blocks tall. And one of these pretty ping pong balls. And a catch cup. Let's see what happens. Goal! But that's too easy. So to make this more interesting, next we need a two by three. So two blocks wide and three blocks long. And we're gonna set, we're gonna stand this up. Lay a two popsicle stick right across here, and then if you do it gently, it actually holds the ball. Now all I need to do is get another ball and knock down the, two, the popsicle stick. What do you think is going to happen? Goal! So we call this a PED, Potential Energy Door, and we have just successfully passed level one because we have made one Potential Energy Door. So, what do you think level two is? So, we're going to get another track. We only get two tracks here, so I'm going to use these wisely. And then I need some more Legos. I'm going to stack two of them tall here. And then lift, put the Legos under this end here. And now, um, I need another two by three here. And a popsicle stick. 
Now I have two potential energy doors. Now it's interesting, I ran out of track, so I'm going to use some tubing here. You might find when you use a heavier object like the car here, it falls off the table. So a way to solve that is to put a block behind it. And now you can park the car without a problem. If you're working with the dominoes and you'd like um, a small light object to knock them over, you run into the fact that there's not enough mass in these to tip them over. So to increase the potential energy in the dominoes, you can use a popsicle stick. You just lay it under the block here, just enough so it's barely balancing. And with this increased potential energy, now it's easier to knock it over. If you have trouble getting the track to stay where you want it to stay, if it keeps sliding off, you can use a clothespin and that creates a little hook down here which rests on the edge of the wood and stays really well on there. You could even put two on there to kind of balance it out so then the ball can still roll down the middle. Working with the ping pong ball or any kind of ball that you think is gonna go in a tube and it does but then it doesn't come back out, a uh, simple trick for that is just to use the track and just gently pop it up the other side. If you're having trouble with the tube uh, that you want to sit in one spot and it keeps rolling, another neat trick with the clothes pins is just to put them, um, you can do probably two here, and they will keep it from rolling. Hold it in place and you can still put the car in there. The seesaw trick is relatively simple, but it takes some practice with the balancing. Here I have four Lego blocks, there are two by fours here, and one, what is this, two by ten block, and I'm going to put this underneath, but I'm not going to balance it, I'm actually going to move it so that this side is heavier, and then I'm going to put these four blocks on the other end and tilt it up, and this is the balancing part. I like to put the Legos as close to the edge as I can get it without them falling off. And then I put the cup ready to go. Now you don't want to put the ping pong ball here because, oh, yeah, don't put it there. <laughs> Instead, you want to put the ping pong ball right around here, just past the midpoint. That'll let it to roll and then come back. A step up from that is to add a little block here or something to redirect the ball in a changed direction. Brand new technique, never seen this before. When you're ready. Go! <laughs> Magic trick. Go. Go. Yeah. Go. Yeah.